Astronomy to GCSE, Topic 3.1, Constellations. So one, some astronomical vocab, stars. Now, you should really know what a star is, but I'll do a quick overview. This definition of a star is quite good. A star is a luminous sphere of plasma held together by its own gravity. From Earth, most stars appear as a small point of light on the night sky. So double stars. Double stars are quite simply two stars that appear close together. In reality, the stars may be light years apart, however they could be part of a binary system with two stars. Asterisms. An asterism is simply a pattern of stars. They often make a shape like the plough, a Rhine's belt or the summer triangle. If you are asked to name an asterism, I would always go for the plough or a Rhine's belt. Now remember, asterisms are definitely not constellations. So what is a constellation? A constellation is an area of the celestial sphere defined by exact boundaries. Now, the celestial sphere is the night sky, so a constellation is just an area of the night sky. The pattern of stars within that area is an asterism. This is an example of a constellation. This particular constellation is Orion. As you can see from the lighter area, the constellation is more than just a pattern of stars. An open cluster is a group of stars that are loosely bound by their own gravity. They were all formed from the same cloud of gas, so all have similar ages. An example of an open cluster would be the Pleiades, which is sometimes called the Seven Sisters, but if you have to refer to it, always go for the scientific name, the Pleiades. Now, a globular cluster. A globular cluster is a collection of stars tightly bound by their own gravity. A globular cluster as a whole will orbit a galactic core, just like the Sun orbits the galactic core at the centre of the Milky Way. A globular cluster may contain hundreds of thousands of stars. And finally, nebulae. Nebulae are clouds of dust and gas in space. These clouds often contain stars which light them up. With the naked eye, nebulae appear as fuzzy patches in the night sky. This picture is part of the Eagle Nebula, often called the Pillars of Creation. 2. How stars in constellations are labelled. In a constellation, stars are labelled by their apparent magnitude, so their brightness, and the Greek alphabet. If you don't know the Greek alphabet already, I would recommend learning up to epsilon. Learning the whole thing is also useful as the letters do come up in maths, physics, and of course, Greece. So basically, the brightest star in the constellation has the letter alpha the first letter of the Greek alphabet. The second brightest star has the letter beta, and the third brightest star has the letter gamma, and so on. 3. The official list of constellations. The IAU split the night sky into 88 constellations. These constellations are often named after the shape of stars that are inside the constellation, for example, Orion. This is why it can be quite confusing to differentiate between a constellation, an area of the celestial sphere defined by exact boundaries, and an asterism, which is a pattern of stars. The IAU explains that constellations were defined using shapes made by star patterns. However, as astronomical discoveries quickened, a set of constellation boundaries were required. This is a very rough drawing of the plough, as it is called in Europe or the Big Dipper, as it is called in America. Although the constellations are defined precisely by the IAU, different cultures have different names and traditional stories for the asterisms and the star patterns. 4. How to draw the Plough, Orion, Cygnus, Cassiopeia, and also how to find celestial objects from some of these star patterns. So how to draw the plough? You should include seven stars and arrange them roughly as follows. The square part of the plough that looks a little bit like a saucepan should have a slightly wider top. The handle should then come from the top left star of the rectangle and contain 
three additional stars in a slight curve. Now for the pointers. The two stars on the far right point up to Polaris, also called the North Star or the Pole Star. Polaris is the next brightest star after the pointers. Polaris is further away than the end of my arrow, so if you're trying to look for it, don't get confused. The plough can also be used to locate Arcturus. If you follow through the arc made by the handle, then eventually get to a brighter star called Arcturus. So, how to draw Orion? You should include at least seven stars, as this is asked for in most mark schemes. Now, how to arrange them. The belt of Orion, which is an asterism, should be angled up slightly. Orion's body is only just wider than the belt, however much longer. You can also include Orion's head and arms, but the main body with the seven stars is the most important part. Orion's belt can be used to locate other celestial objects. If you follow the belt down to the next brightest star, you will find Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky. If you follow the belt up to the next brightest star, you will find Aldebaran. If you continue this line, then after Aldebaran, you will find the Pleiades, an open cluster. Now for Cygnus. Again, you should really include at least seven stars. So how to arrange them? Start with a cross, or more of an X shape. Then extend the lower three sides. The reason Cygnus is called Cygnus, the Latinized Greek name for swan, is because it looks a little bit like one. Cassiopeia. This has to be the easiest one. Cassiopeia is just a W or an M. I always draw it as a W, but there you go. These are the only patterns of stars that you're meant to recognise. However, that is another constellation you need for pointers. You shouldn't really need to draw this asterism. You just have to use a map of it to locate both the Andromeda Galaxy and Formelhout. So let's first find Formelhout. Take the right two stars of the Great Square of Pegasus and follow them down until our next really bright star. That's how to find Formelhout. Next to find Andromeda, take the top left star of the Great Square of Pegasus. This has a chain off it. Towards the top of this chain on the right is the Andromeda Galaxy. 5. Seasonal Constellations Some constellations are seasonal. This means that they can only be seen during some times of the year, like the winter or the summer. This is due to our orbit around the sun, and at what time of day these constellations are above the horizon, so in the sky. With seasonal constellations, at one time of the year the constellation will be seen at night, like this. However, Half a year later, the sun is between the observer and the constellation. This means that the constellation is seen at daytime, where the light from the constellation is bleached out and cannot be seen because of the light from the sun, a bit like this. An example of a seasonal constellation is Orion. Other constellations are not seasonal, as they may be above our poles, let's say, our axes of rotation, so not obscured by the sun. An example of a constellation that is visible throughout the year would be Ursa Minor in the Northern Hemisphere. Ursa Minor can never be seen from the Southern Hemisphere due, due to the Earth being in the way. Thank you very much for watching. This is the end of Astronomy to GCSE Topic 3.1. Hope to see you next time.